John Hamer talked about having to stop the bleeding. He talked about the lack of confidence. Um, what do you think we can do in this camp to restore confidence? Results obviously would be the first. That's the, yeah, look, it was ultimate, but ultimately building on that, I think that uh, the first half performance against Greece, especially, I think that's the, the key point. Um, Emphasising obviously all the good moments, but obviously showing the bits where the manager in particular were trying to develop new little ideas to re-emphasise that again for a couple of newer lads in the group as well. So just touching on that and quickly because it's obviously it's a strange week in the sense of the preparation time. So obviously the video analysis will be a key part in in the preparation to it. So it's a key bit of that, but ultimately it's getting that positivity, breaking the habit, like he said. In terms of uh, just getting getting the wins on the board as quick as you can, and that obviously, but first and foremost, I think it's the performance level. <coughs> if you take care of that for the full game, I think that will lead to the results as well. The fact that Matt Doherty has been left out of this squad and a few others, Jacob Bryan as well. Um, talk to me about what impact that might have on the other players. Someone as experienced as Matt, who's been, who's a Premier League player. Yeah, look, it's one of them. It's a case of obviously the. The manager spoken about it and spoken to the players this morning in terms of showing the next windows, the international windows, and the chances that we have to see some newer faces and uh, try some newer lads in positions. But in the sense of also realising how important winning games are and the rankings and the confidence and all that type of thing leading up to the World Cup draw. So there's still an emphasis on winning games too, but also obviously trying a little bit of uh, new combinations, uh, new understandings. And getting that in as quickly as you can because next year you might be able to do that. Obviously, injuries, different things, suspensions happen. So, lads have to be tested, lads have to be seen at the level, and obviously, hopefully, respond to it. But no player, Doc in particular, will, he's definitely still in the plans. Like, there's no case of, you know what I mean? It's just hopefully it's that positive reaction in terms of everybody that you respond well, and hopefully, performances lead to everyone having a tough. Uh, squad to pick, you know what I mean. That everyone gives a manager a tough decision to make. That's the key. Can I ask you, as a centre half yourself, about Matt McGuinness, uh, a new call up, and, and what he could bring to the, to the team? Okay. Yeah, no. Look, obviously, I've worked with Martin in the twenty ones. Um, he's look, he's he's been one that we've obviously had an idea about for a long time in terms of his progression, um, and obviously we know the centre half. Area we have obviously quality competition there, but I think Mark's development is, in the sense, similar to Jake's in a way. Um, but also for the fact himself, he suffered a little bit with injuries the first half of last season, and then got himself back fit, and then managed to get a good move to Luton. And he's going to probably, I think, keep progressing. I think he's that type of character. He wants to get himself back into the Premier League. He was desperate to get involved with the Irish national team as well, and it's a case of. <coughs> Not only his defensive capabilities, his obviously set piece threat, and obviously composure and passing ability as well, a total package. Would you expect him to get game time in these two matches? Yeah, look, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. I think uh, when the manager picks the squad, he's, he's confident of, of any player, of any player uh, being selected and being available to play. That's the whole idea. You, when you're picked in the squad, he tells the players it's the whole idea of you're ready for. Maximum minutes, are you ready for no minutes? That's the that's the competition level we need. Can I ask Evan then quickly? You had eight minutes, I think, against England, just over half an hour maybe uh, against Greece. Are you ready for 90, do you think? We'll have to wait and see. I feel good. I've been back in now. I've been back in full time for a few for a month or two now, so uh, I feel good. So we'll just have to wait and see. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, hi, John. Okay. Um, you were talking about there about all the experiments and we need to try and find. Combinations and try a few things out. Was there a bit of a fresh feel to think this morning? Was that needed? Um, well, it's not as if it, it, it's, it's it's a case of the manager needing to see, speaking to people, needing to see people in the flesh. Um, in terms of obviously, he went out and saw the games as well and got to meet people, um, but also uh, knowing that when you you need results, but also knowing that you need to have a plan in place for the squad. The age of profile of players, needing to see people, the level, are they ready to come in and really help and uh, stake their claim for that spot so they can say, no, I'm, I'm, th this is my position, I want to stay here for the next five, six, seven years type of thing, you know, that's what we need and hopefully talking about uh, leadership in terms of the group itself, 
um, it's a key part that everyone has to kind of step up and take those roles. Do you see it as kind of a brave move from Hamer? Is he still looking for his first win? Would it have been easier to kind of stick with the old tried and trusted when he's looking for his first win? Do you see it as brave to kind of Switching focus to 2026 now? Ah, no, look, it's not like that at all. As I, as I mentioned, we're, we're fully focused on getting good results against uh, Finland and Greece and the next two uh, two games. Um, you, yeah, you could say it's brave, but also <coughs> it's, a, it's a development in terms of what we're looking for the group, in terms of, right, there's, we need to get a competitive, settled squad, but also knowing that, right, there's an option there to take it. Can you take it as well? It's a, it's that balance that needs to be needs to be struck over the next couple of uh, games in particular. But obviously, then when you see the draw, that you know that you have a healthy, competitive squad, and I think that will always lead to us being uh, very competitive in the qualifying. I know Hamer's big into the stats, and he feels he can judge a lot on players from from the base, basically. But are you of that kind of same ilk, or do you like to get maybe? Ah, look, it, it, it's a it's a mixture of both, really. You know what I mean? It, it's it's definitely a case. Of, yeah, it's good to see lads, but also y y you miss things at a game too, and that's why the video footage can cover every angle. You got a you got a full angle. It's it's obviously y the chance you get to meet and talk to players as well to see how they're getting on. But also when, when you're watching the game, depending on where you're sitting, necessarily you mightn't see the full picture. Then, but obviously then you can. You get the video angles that cover the full, the full focus of positionally where players should be. You're thinking maybe someone's in the right position all the time, but then when you watch it back on the video, he could have been in a better position as well. So it's a balance of both. John, just um, you know, to be honest, there was some of the former teammates analysing the last game, and we were very critical of Matt and his work rate in that game and copying up that goal against Greece. Is that something we're <coughs> going to be strict on that the players make mistakes in games or don't show? 100% effort that, that's it, that no, it's not. It's not a case. Uh, I know, obviously, that uh, kind of probably their, their angle, the angle that you're kind of looking at there. But it's a case of we, we focus on inside the camp, what we're preparing the players for, what we're looking at, and then obviously reviewing it and discussing it and seeing what we can do to be better going forward. Always, be, always be the case. Mark McGuinness, you were talking about him. I suppose well, it's the fact that there's. A lot of centre backs coming through, a lot of good, talented centre backs. Mm. Can't be saying the same for midfield, centre midfield. It seems to be one of the, the, the areas where Ireland are, are lacking depth. Is that something you think Amir is aware of and that he can address? Yeah, and I think it's one of them. I think we need to get away from uh, almost that negative aspect of positions in the team and the squad and players because the dedication and the sacrifice that every player and the levels these players are playing at, I think, is sometimes forgotten about. They're really good players. They're playing at a really good level, and I think it's a bit of a not a nonsense, but we're kind of too derogatory towards these players because they're really good players that are playing at a really good level, and they're showing dedication to want to come and play for Ireland. So I think we should be getting behind them a bit more. Evan, just want to ask you as well, Fabian Hurts said he was the week before last that um, you have the whole package as a striker. Um, I suppose it's probably comforting to hear that you're coming back from injury, but you've got a couple of good strikers ahead of you. Has he kind of set any kind of challenge for you? I know he's probably bringing it back nice as though he did want to make a any old injuries, but um, has he kind of set any challenges for you this season? No, he's not really set challenges in a way. He's just been talking to me and what I can do and what sort of needs to be done in, in his eyes to to get playing and what he wants in his system. So he's not really set any goals, but just to just to come back and play as, play as I can. Do you think you can play... Like the, the system that he plays in, where it's all squeezed up into the final third, it's a bit different to Deserby's approach, maybe. Um, do you think you fit into this system maybe a little bit better? Um, I don't know, it's hard to say because I haven't really fit into it yet. I haven't played too much yet, so it's hard to say. But from the outside of things, it probably looks like it, it suits me a bit better uh, on the front foot. I just uh, want to mention your teammate, Danny Albeck, playing in the game still 33 years of age. What do you learn from a player like him? I mean, you learn every day. It's like good mates with Danny, and you see what he does every day in terms of preparation for training and like regeneration and all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So you learn something, something new every day. We'll move into the embargoed section now. So everything from this point onwards is 11 p.m. onwards. And Neil, if you want to get started. Hi, John. Uh, can Hi, you talk about Mark McGinnis? Is he the most naturally gifted on the, the ball of the centre half? 
Oh, no, look, I'm not going to get down that route in terms of, as I said, Matt, um, the players obviously that we have in that position are all more than more than capable on the ball and obviously they won't be playing at the levels that they're at. Um, but obviously that's it's it's one of obviously Mark's strengths as well, you know. But he knows at the level of competition that there is that you have to be bang at it every game that he's playing now as well. The focus and scrutiny will be on him now in terms of um, there's a bit more pressure on at Luton in the sense of coming down from the Prem and then obviously he's a, one of their bigger signings now so he's got to respond to that pressure in terms of getting Luton back up, challenging in the Championship and obviously now trying to get his force his way into an international starting team rather than just a squad. And how good is it for Ireland? I know it doesn't really necessarily affect this window but it looks like Peter Keller is going to get an extended run in Liverpool as well. Ah, look, it's, it, I think... The, the good thing for us, in the sense of um, we know how good he is, like anyway, and how he's been performing, um, if if called upon when he hasn't been playing, say for Liverpool, so we know how much he, he trains hard and dedicates himself to it. But if he does uh, l look like he obviously will be getting an extended run in the team, it'll be obviously even better again because it's just it's that match practice he showed last season, the level he's capable of. If he gets a chance to do that again, I think you'll see. Um, Obviously, there'll be lots more attention on him again. John, uh, Evan, how are you doing? Um, when we spoke after the Greek game, we know you only played him on the boat, but he felt the weight of the shorts with those effective players. Um, is that a sense you get? Is there a, is there a pressure, or is it just something that comes from the fact that having a very good run in the Yeah, you know, maybe it's probably just from the fact that we've not we've not picked up the results that we've sort of we've sort of wanted, you know what I mean? I think it could be a confidence thing. Like I think when we get the ball rolling and we pick up points and get a few wins, then it could be a, a different story. But I think it's it's easy to look at the negatives when, when you're not there, you know? And John, um, again, Adam Brown did mention he thought we don't have a world-class player of the Leeds that are affecting us. I know we sit inside you, but does Evan have the potential to be world-class? <laughs> He just has to get out of the room now. If he goes out of the room, I'll tell you. No, look, I think we all know what Evan has done already um, at international and at club level. So we just want him back up to speed as quick as we can in terms of uh, fully fit uh, games under his belt and knowing what he can produce um, and just getting that consistency going then and then we'll, uh, we'll see the levels he can reach. Yeah, well, we've got good competition there. Like, if you're playing in the Premier League, yeah, you're not gonna have bad players around you. But I think, for me, it's I just need to get back in, getting minutes and playing consistently and trying to get myself back into the team when when I can. And what do you think from Heimar? Do you think you can you can do play the way he wants you to play? Do you think he's a man who just runs along, or have you do you see yourself fitting into what Heimar has as more than as a player? I think so. Yeah, I think all the lads have they've sort of gone into what he wants and we all know what he wants and how he wants us to do it so I think everyone can chip in and everyone can play the way that he wants it so I think we just need to wait for it all to click together and I think we'll be good. Alex? Hey Evan, uh, what has Fabian told you that you need to work on in the Well there's, there's lots of different things obviously when there's a new manager coming in it's like international they try to change pretty much everything like it's a new it's a new way of playing football so obviously me coming back I've had time to sort of work on my own sort of stuff that I need to do and listen for me I'm just trying to stay fit and get back in the team and just, just build up what John said about the weight of the jersey like, do you feel confident coming in or is it just interjecting? yeah, yeah every, I think everyone feels confident it's like no one wants to come in and lose two games you know what I mean so I think we just need to come together, realise where we are, and go from there. Phil? Uh, John, you're very uh, robust in your defensive players there. And, uh, but, uh, I think it's been what would you comment made about players, whether it's by the media or whoever, but uh, the, the, uh, we've lost our last eight competitive games, taking the vote out of it. Uh, and there has been a slide in the rankings in the last four or five years. So I think, we're, I think what people are doing is just reflecting where the team
Yeah, now all I was saying was just about a particular area on the pitch where right, people seem to keep focusing on rather than the group in general. Well, we'd all like the right positive thing, but do you, do you sense that things are going to turn for the better and do you think it's going to happen in this window? Yeah, well, that's the key point, and I think Evan just mentioned it there. Like, I think it's nearly 28 odd years I've been involved in Irish teams, camps, playing, training, coaching. No one comes in wanting to be negative. No one comes in, everyone comes in wanting to do well for their country. Everyone wants to have positive performances, everyone wants to win games um, and at different spells you'll have a rough patch and the only way you get through it is sticking together, working hard and making sure that everyone in the room, everyone in that squad that's named is together and fully focused on getting results for Ireland and that comes with hard work, doing the basics right and then eventually you can implement different bits stage by stage and if you can do that as quickly as possible, hopefully then slowly the momentum shifts and you get the wins that you need and the positive results that you need but ultimately getting the performance levels right behind it is the key bit as well. And finally, Heimer spoke to the Buckley last week, he's a little bit taken aback by the media to focus on him and the Ireland manager, maybe he didn't realise that you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty big gig, have you been able to sort of just talk him through that? Just I just told him oh, you're all a lovely bunch, yeah. you know, <laughs> I said. <laughs> 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 um, but no, look, it, look, it's obviously He's, he's fully aware and that, that's something um, yeah you, obviously we, we, we would have spoken about but it's just I think as you mentioned as well the, the England game being obviously the level of exposure behind that as well so but no look the dedication and sacrifice and uh, application that I've seen from the manager is someone that wants to get big results and quick results for Ireland too so um, but there's steps there's steps to that as well Aidan just for John just that follow between performances and results, Sean, you made your debut over Vic and one of the next tenants was that he was praised for the team playing well and the defeat, he often said, I wish we played terrible and won. Yeah. So this window, was there down at that where, where actually the result because of the form results trumps some of the performance? Yeah, oh, oh, look, the, the, the big one will always be the result ultimately because that's the, the, the massive one, but if you're trying to get new ideas across and to implement them as well, there has to be a balance with that too, but look, we want to win. We're going into these games wanting to win, but ultimately we're wanting to see what we're looking for as well from the group in terms of how we want to win and how we want to go about it too. So it's striking that balance, but ultimately you know, any coach or any manager says, yeah, but the result will be ultimately the key. But if you're telling me now we're going to play terrible and beat Finland, we're going to take it. You're going to tell, you know what I mean? It's obvious. Mark? Uh, Evan, just obviously what was the goal in this window for you? Um, obviously it's, it's good to score goals as a striker maybe get me back in into a flow of getting that rhythm and, and back scoring goals again and what I want to do but I wouldn't say I'm like going out my way to, to score a goal I'm just playing playing how I'm playing and I'm not trying to trying to force that because I think if you start doing that then you start Overthinking stuff, and you can end up just going backwards. Sean, Evan, how's it going? Just, just on last season, how frustrating was it to have those few months on the sidelines and while you're on the sidelines? Like, did you learn anything yourself and recovery? Yeah, it's, it's obviously not easy as a player, but it's probably the first period that I have of it, and people tell you to expect the up and downs, and when you're in it, it's, it's not a nice place, but. Um, no, I'm out of it now and, and I feel good and I'm ready to go. Then. Just through talking to Troy there, he said when he kind of came on the scene in 18, 19, he was very excited to kind of spotlight. Spotlight very difficult, obviously, he's coming up to I think a few years since your first Premier League goals and everything that's followed since then. Is that some, something you've found difficult kind of stuff? How, how have you handled that personally? I wouldn't really say difficult. I think you sort of, when you're growing up and you go over to academies, you sort of you see it and you get exposed to it, so I wouldn't say difficult. I'd say it's new and you just have to, to learn to adapt to it. But I'd say once you do once you do it once, like you sort of it's always the same thing. David? John, you've already kind of gone kind of a bit of a back and forth about there with some of the comments that, that have been made. Was that something that for you and the manager that's been important to you to get that balance between playing with stuff that you can't say about players on the outside but also the positives that have passed from what they mean to you? Yeah, uh, look, it, yeah, it's, it's all, as I mentioned, David, it's the, it's the balance. You've you got to know that, yeah, there has to be um, 
scrutiny on performance, scrutiny on uh, stuff that we're looking for. Um, and then it's obviously the balance then of, right, yeah, we are doing good bits too. So here it's the good and the bad and making sure that your consistency looking for when pictures are happening in games, that this is what we're looking for. I think that's the key bit and you have to keep emphasising that. And then you can see it already this morning in terms of the video that the manage, manager showed the lads and little pictures already that the lads pick up in training straight away. You're re uh, reinforcing ideas for lads that were in the last uh, camp and then for the newer lads to show them the pictures from the training or the, vid the video this morning and doing it in the training today. So it's getting that balance right, but also moving forward too. Paul, uh, John, you mentioned a few times there about working on a few new things. Do you mean since the manager's come in or do you mean new things since last week's game? No, since the, since the manager's come in. Yeah, yeah, you know, since the manager's come in, it's getting those ideas across. Thanks, everyone.